Hi everybody, it is April 15, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along an article to me. And in reading that article, I was prompted to do a little bit more research. So, I have said that I think a lot of Trump supporters are not doing the necessary research to find out what this guy is doing. And unfortunately, they're parroting back what they hear from mainstream media. How great this guy is doing. And he has brought back jobs, Carol. Americans are working again. If you can believe the numbers that you're hearing out of Washington, D.C., well, good for you. Um, I don't. But when you hear Hey, an announcement <clears throat> which you will hear from Trump about Foxconn, this plant in Wisconsin that Foxconn is going to be building and bringing so many jobs with it. You need to do more research. You've got to find out who is Foxconn. Find out what Foxconn is all about. And you have to think in terms of Agenda 2030. Where are these jobs going? Are they going to our fabulous mega regions like Foxconn going to, well, let's see, Racine, Wisconsin? Wow, it's the Great Lakes mega region. Okay. But you also have to do further research to find out, hey, let's see if what Foxconn is saying and what Trump is saying is actually the truth. So, let's listen to Trump first. This is a great day for American workers and manufacturing and for everyone who believes in the concept and the label made in the USA. He's a great American. He loves America. Today I'm pleased to announce that Foxconn, a world leader in manufacturing for computers, communications, and consumer electronics, one of the truly great companies of the world, will build a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility for the production of LCD panel products in Wisconsin, investing many, many billions of dollars right here in America and creating thousands of jobs. And I mean American jobs. That's what we want. American jobs, really. Okay. Wait. Why do it here? TV was invented in America. Yet, American does not have a single LCD fab to produce a complete AK system. We are going to change that. Walker, I'd like to, to thank you and the, your leadership teams. I would well, like to thank you, Mr. Jerry, Jerry Kushner, the White House Office of American Innovation, for your hard work to make this investment a reality. Okay, so Part of this announcement was Trump taking an awful lot of credit and how brilliant he was in negotiating this deal to bring jobs to America. And wow, everybody is just so wowed by jobs in Wisconsin. He's bringing manufacturing back to America. Carol, can't you see? So many Americans are going to benefit from it. It's a chance to get in on the Foxconn action, and hundreds of companies lined up for a chance to get a piece of the $10 billion economic pie. Ben Jordan shares how the state is making sure local businesses are given priority. 
Construction managers say they will be breaking ground right here in rural Sturtevant on phase one of the Foxconn plant either this month or May. Next is what the state calls the beginning of the ripple effect. Around 500 construction related businessmen and women who fill this ballroom come from a variety of specialties, but they're all here for the same reason. To see what I can do for them and what they can do for me. Martin Ka To see what I can do for them and what they can do for me. Money, money, money. Our focus on money, unfortunately, has destroyed us. So all of these people are showing up because they think that they're going to get a piece of that $10 billion pie, and some of them will. But are you hearing anything about how much it's going to cost Americans, those Wisconsinites? You haven't heard that yet. And, well, listen to this. Foxconn, the Taiwanese electronics manufacturer, is pledging to build a factory uh, and a facility in Wisconsin, but taxpayers may not see the benefits until 2043, according to new analysis by the Legislative Fiscal Bureau. The wow, 243. Hmm. Well, it's 2018. Many of you won't even be alive to benefit from this great deal. Yes, there is Mr. Trump hugging the CEO of Foxconn. This deal. All right. What does it say? Wisconsin lawmakers voted Monday to advance a $3 billion deal to bring a Foxconn factory the size of seven football fields. And when you saw that news clip with this guy who is standing um, in this huge well, looks like a cornfield. You think, all right, they're building on land that maybe a farmer has sold to them. Right? Well, wait. Um, but what's this $3 billion deal? Wait a second. Trump just mentioned that everybody was going to be benefiting from a $10 billion investment from Foxconn. Oh, the taxpayers are going to have to foot the bill to get Foxconn to come to Racine, Wisconsin. Hmm, would taxpayers in this manufacturing town, which is next to Lake Michigan, have to absorb the cost of new water and sewer lines? Well, why isn't that company, why, isn't that part of the $10 billion investment? The taxpayers have to put the bill for those sewer lines? You know, when you build a business, well, you purchase land, and then you have to assume the costs of getting that business up and running. Why are taxpayers? Oh, that's right, Foxconn is a corporation. So, if the company really did hire 3,000 workers, wait, I thought I heard 13,000 workers. That's right, it was in that clip with this woman who is interviewing Scott Walker. Oh, it's just going to be a brilliant, beautiful Wisconsin again. People working, 13,000. Wait, but it's 3,000. 3,000. Um, here, this is an operative word. Foxconn's interest in the Midwestern state has triggered a debate over government efforts to lure companies via tax breaks, betting, operative word, betting the public will benefit in the long run. If Walker's plan works, the payoff is long-term prosperity. If it falls apart, the state will have to shell out serious cash for broken employment dreams. Wisconsin, oh, it's not really Wisconsin. It's you guys who live in Wisconsin. You'll be shelling out the money, three billion over the next 15 years in refundable tax credits. Now we know corporations, so many, don't even pay taxes. 
but they're going to be getting refundable tax credits that you will pay for for 15 years. And expanding the local infrastructure could be costly, and there's no guarantee the jobs would go to Wisconsin residents. Don't you think that that would have to be in the contract? Um, the public just learned of the Foxconn deal last month. Now, the date of this article is August 2017. And you'll get to hear what has happened since. But, um, where am I? So, the public just learned of the Foxconn deal last month, July 2017. And the lawmakers were voting on it so quickly. Hmm. The bill that lawmakers are reviewing this week would allow Foxconn to dump dredge into a non-federal waterway or wetland without a permit. Wow, what a deal. So Foxconn comes into Wisconsin and the environmental damage from Foxconn is that a good deal? Absolutely not. It will cost the state 25 years to pay back when the state is kind of broke on money already. I don't know if they should have given so many incentives. But Lisa Bell, chairman of the Racine County Republican Party, she said that she wants to see the area's manufacturing footprint grow Beyond that, she said the Foxconn plant could jumpstart the area's construction industry. Well, that all sounds fabulous. Why Foxconn's CEO thinks Trump is good for American business. Yes, a Taiwanese-owned company. And you'll find out more about this company. But Trump and Foxconn's CEO met four times this year to negotiate the deal. And Foxconn chief said Trump is a businessman looking to create jobs for Americans. Foxconn's planned facility is expected to employ as many as 13,000. Wait, we just read 3,000. Okay, it, well, numbers. They just throw numbers at you. Like me, Trump is a businessman who uses very direct, simple language. Simple language. All right. So many were, like, excited that this guy, Trump, he wasn't a politician. He's a businessman. So he'll be good for America. Good for America. Wisconsin clears the way for Foxconn by bulldozing working people's homes and paying them pennies on the dollar. April 12, 2018. What's happening in Wisconsin with this fabulous deal? Wisconsin's far-right state government declared victory for its free market agenda when it announced that it would transfer three billion in taxpayer funded corporate welfare to Foxconn. Foxconn, a Taiwanese owned company. In order to tempt the company to open a factory in the state despite the company's long history of broken promises and outright lies about the jobs and spending in other places that had welcomed it. As part of the corporate welfare package, Wisconsin has agreed to secure a vast tract of land in Racine County for Foxconn's complex. And the state is securing this land through eminent domain, the process by which governments can force a sale of land for some public purpose, like building roads or clearing the way for power lines. Now, Trump is Mr. Eminent Domain. And that was one of the um, issues that I was trying to bring up to people that 
He's a businessman. He does not care about people. If he wants to build something, he does everything he can to destroy the lives around where he wants to build a golf course in Scotland or a, 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 a casino in Atlantic City. And so many had to well they're they're in Scotland and as well in New Jersey many were destroyed individuals destroyed and so many people had to fight like hell just to remain in their own home to save money on the seizure of the homes of working people in Racine County the county has declared the homes to be blighted that is, in such poor condition that they are effectively worthless, allowing it to seize the land for pittance, leaving the former owners of the homes with massive mortgage debts on houses that no longer exist, with no cash to buy a new place to live. They are being wiped out. Homeowners of Racing County were each given three minutes to speak at a town meeting where their objections were recorded and disregarded. The speakers reminded the town that it had approved permits for costly renovations to their homes after it had privately promised Foxconn. These people should be run out of their offices. I do not understand how it is that Americans yeah, when, when you actually suffer the consequences of these Americans who are in these positions of power, who are screwing you, when you suffer the consequences, you get angry. But why aren't people angry enough to rip these people out of office? They're stealing your homes. They're lying to you getting more money for those permits when they already know that they're going to be stealing your home. It, it, they had already privately promised Foxconn that it would knock those homes down. They pointed out that Wisconsin law prohibited this kind of eminent domain abuse. They vowed to sue. Foxconn's already opened a small plant in Wisconsin. They already opened a small plant. The workers, hey, isn't that a great wage? $14 an hour. And guess what? The jobs were staffed by temps, and they hired a national hiring agency. They did not even recruit from Wisconsin. These stories, okay, Kim and James Mahoney, had been in their dream home less than a year when notified it was going to be raised for the Foxconn development. They're still waiting for an offer, even as the process to condemn their property has blighted, is underway. They don't even have an offer, and the raising of their property is underway. Most of the speakers were homeowners who were still holding out hope that they could keep their properties or at least obtain better offers. Others were just frustrated that they had yet to receive offers despite months having passed since the village-sponsored auditors had completed their assessments. They spoke of their history in these homes, the care and expense they'd lavished on their properties. Many brought pictures. We spent our life savings on this thing, and now we've got to move. It was extremely personal for residents. Having your carefully maintained residence, or in at least one case, recently bought dream home designated as blighted. Blighted. Here, neatly maintained homes and dream houses are being dis designated as blighting, blighted, blighted, sorry, for Foxconn. Corporate. This is a corporate world. Corporations rule. Mr. Trump is Mr. Corporate. 
So March 20 of this year, a full room of Racine County residents assembled to make and hear public statements before the board of the Community Development Authority of Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. One item was on the agenda, the board's first step in the designation of some 3,000 acres of agricultural land, farmhouses, and scattered, neatly maintained single-family homes as blighted. All of these people had three minutes and they were told that if they needed more time you had 15 days to submit in writing your objections. And this is what some of the people said. The village is telling us our land is worthless while at the same time you're telling Foxconn it's the best property in the world. I don't know how any of you guys can sit here and do this. Another one. I've lived in my home for 28 years. I'm a tax-paying citizen and I deserve better than this to just be kicked to the curb and thrown out of my residence. Another one. It will be a sad day when the wrecking ball demolishes the house and buildings we have put our hearts and soul into. Americans, you are being so unbelievably screwed. Textbook case of eminent domain abuse and abuses, eminent domain abuses are occurring all over the country. Do you, do you really think that Trump will stand up and say anything about that? No. But people's homes, property, they're being stolen under this eminent domain authority given to governments, but many governments are using eminent domain for private developers. Oh, Trump is a private developer. And that is an abuse of eminent domain authority and it goes on, it goes on, it goes on everywhere. And it will continue to go on until Americans finally get that their government officials are criminals. Just because they wear suits, just because they have a fancy title or whatever title they have, they're criminals stealing your property. You know, if somebody came to this couple and broke into their home and held a gun and told them to get out, I want your property, they would understand that a crime was being committed by a criminal. Just because it goes through government channels, <laughs> they're deceived in thinking that what what's going on is not a crime? Oh, wait, now it's 4.5 billion. And this was posted January 18. Well, guess what? It's going to even be more costly for you. Now, let's see. Oh, iPhone manufacturer Foxconn plans to replace almost every human worker with robots. Robots. Now, we already have here in the United States, a takeover, a human takeover of robots. We know the robotic age is here. Do you really think Foxconn is going to be just using human beings because Americans are so great in their Foxconn industrial plant in Racine? Really? Well, guess what? It's not going to happen. Foxconn, the Taiwanese manufacturing giant behind Apple's iPhone and numerous other major electronics devices, aims to automate away a vast majority of its human employees. It has set a benchmark of 30% automation at its Chinese factories by 2020. That's two years. The company can now produce around 10,000 Foxbots a year. 
all of which can be used to replace human labor. In March, Foxconn said it had automated away 60,000 jobs at one of its factories. Robots are cheaper than human labor. Yay! Believe your government officials. Believe. Hey, come on. Believe your Governor Walker and Trump. Bus routes from Milwaukee to Racine. What is this about? Five Milwaukee and Racine counties proposing some new bus routes to and from the Foxconn site. Ben Jordan live in downtown Milwaukee with just how many workers this new route could impact. Ben. Steve, the two suggested routes from downtown Milwaukee and Racine could provide rides to around 1,300 shift workers per day. The thought of up to 13,000 jobs at the Foxconn manufacturing plant in Racine County has residents across southeastern Wisconsin eyeing a new opportunity. So I think it's going to spread around a lot of jobs in the community and get people back on their feet. The problem for some coming from the Milwaukee area is the hour commute. Wow. Okay, so Foxconn is going to be uh, shipping people in, transporting them in buses. Does that sound a little Agenda 2030-ish to you? And does that sound like Foxconn has an idea of controlling the employees? Because it does to me. Um, listen to this. According to a report by HuffPost, the approval of a new factory just outside the Great Lakes Basin has raised concerns as it would drain millions of gallons of water from the lakes. If the project is approved by Wisconsin's Department of Natural Resources, electronics manufacturer Foxconn Technology Group will begin to produce liquid crystal displays in a factory outside Racine, Wisconsin. The company has pledged to hire 3,000 people in Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan's district in a largely rural part of the state with a struggling economy. However, the plant is seeking approval to drain 7 million gallons a day from Lake Michigan, leading other Great Lakes states to question the legality of the deal. Environmentalists have also claimed that the deal poses serious risk, as it allows other outside interests to tap into lakes. Oh, wow. Okay. So... Does this sound like a good deal for you guys? The best deal that you Wisconsinites can make is get rid of your government officials, come together in a group, and discuss how you want to be living. Don't allow your government officials to force upon you how you will be living. Try to think outside the box because this is, this is not a good deal at all. Now, I will link below to these videos, Foxconn and Wisconsin, impacts on local government, geography, and policy. Uh, Grindall 61, you see these town hall meetings that are already, they have made their decisions, but they present the information as if, hey, you community members, we want to know what you think. Yeah. Um, oh, God, I can't even... I, my memory is shot. But uh, what is that? Delphi. A Delphi meeting. And, you know, I feel so badly for all of these people who speak up, all of these people. Uh, these people who are sitting on the stage, they have their own agenda. And that agenda does not include you guys in the audience. They're going to be benefiting financially from Foxconn. But you guys sitting in the audience, you guys coming up to that mic, uh, you're going to get nowhere because decisions have already been made. Though Foxconn had said, I think in Pennsylvania, that it was going to be bringing so many jobs and it was going to be opening uh, a industrial um, park in Pennsylvania. And it, it was all lies. I mean, they, they pulled out. Um, so 
Foxconn, they cannot be trusted at all. And here's another public hearing. And let's just listen to this one guy. I got to turn up the uh, volume. Let's hear him. This is a true hearing and not a token gesture to appease the letter of the law. Then please consider the following. I just wanted you to hear that. This man obviously knows that these meetings are, it's, it's a staged, like congressional hearings, they're staged to make you believe that Congress is operating and something's going to happen and nothing ever comes of those hearings. It is the exact same as these meetings in your communities, your local town council holding these meetings where Americans are limited to either two minutes or three minutes. And you can see all of the people who are holding the meeting, hardly any of them listen. This woman in the middle here is on her computer, um, not paying attention to what these people are saying. So he, he asks if this is, you know, an actual meeting, a genuine meeting, a true meeting, um, and not just this staged crap that Americans have been forced to deal with for decades now. Uh, but it is. It is. And this has occurred because Americans have allowed it. They have allowed it. You know, for all of us who have been saying what is happening in Grandel 61, in his area, all of us saying what's happening in California, where it is so obvious that there is a takeover of California by their government. To, and it is truly um, a Agenda 2030, communism on steroid, steroids, and it's obvious in California. But how many of we've been? How many of us have been saying this is happening everywhere, everywhere? It my the details are different, but the staging is the same. And at this point, unfortunately, Americans need to really get the courage to stand up to these people who are forcing their agenda upon you within your own communities. And yeah, it does take courage. But the more you have that stand by you, and the more you have working with you, well, you get stronger and the less courage, the less fear you have. And it's unfortunate that a lot of Americans just never, ever do the research to find out what is happening. So Foxconn, um, this industrial city that they will be creating in this mega region of Wisconsin, you'll all be transported in with buses. Maybe not. This this factory will be seven, the size of seven, seven football fields. And how does Foxconn operate in, in, um, in China? <laughs> Inside Foxconn City, a vast electronics factory under suicide scrutiny. So if any of you realize, ah, Foxconn making Apple products in China. Could they be the company that came under scrutiny? Foxconn workers have compared it to a prison. Some say they'll force their force to work illegal overtime and night shifts have been subjected to corporal violence and exposed to hazardous 
materials and have their privacy invaded by management. And employees say they are still underpaid despite the promise of an across-the-board 30% raise earlier this year. The CEO of Foxconn lies all the time. Capping the list of woes at the Taiwanese manufacturer, Reuters reported earlier this month that a 23-year-old employee of Foxconn had jumped to his death. It was the 13th reported Foxconn employee suicide of the year. Guess what? Foxconn coming to Wisconsin. And do you really think that because you're American, you're special? No, you're not. In the first five months of this year, 12 Foxconn employees took their own lives at the industrial park. Foxconn began taking practical steps to address the unprecedented spate of worker suicides. Workers' dormitory buildings were skirted with suicide nets. Crisis hotlines were established and wages increased. Although in some locations barely in a living wage, the company also staged solidarity rallies for workers. Great. Don't be surprised if Foxconn actually goes through with this deal. Don't be surprised if you hear these announcements coming out of Foxconn. Well, we've decided to build well, he's not going to say a dormitory, but within that industrial park that he's building in Wisconsin, that the employees will have an area to live. And that is happening already in our country. And when you see companies like Google, and they're building smart cities, corporations are building cities. And they make it sound really good. So the Google firm wins competition to build high-tech Quayside neighborhood in Toronto. Ah, uh, yeah. Your fabulous Prime Minister Trudeau selling you guys out in Canada. So let's just hear a little bit about this Quayside. Oh, doesn't it look fabulous? Wow, this is an artist's rendering of what Quayside will look like. This is a high-tech neighborhood. Isn't it lovely? You'll run around, you'll be free, you'll be barefoot, you'll have butterflies, you'll be able to canoe on rivers, in rivers. Um, it's just going to be wonderful. And you know what? You'll have bicycles. You won't need cars. Transportation would be provided by small self-driving taxi bots controlled by app services with self-driving buses to follow an already planned waterfront light rail line would link new communities with surrounding areas including the West Don Lands and Canary District. The flow of people will be monitored. Hmm. There'll be sensors everywhere. It's the Internet of Things life. And it will be maximized by computer sens sensors constantly analyzing data, constantly monitoring everywhere you go. Instead of city garbage trucks rumbling through the streets, robot vehicles would move waste and other goods through underground tunnels. Weather mit mitigation features including wind shields and possibly heated surfaces could double the time people spend outside and encourage cycling and walking. And it will be a radically mixed use of buildings. And it will be this public-private partnership, Toronto, along with Google. You will be paying for the building of your quayside. Because any which way a corporation can make you pay, that's the way they do it. Now, uh... You know, life and death in Apple's forbidden city, Foxconn, looks like fun, doesn't it, Wisconsinites?
Oh, that's right. They hire temporary employees, which means you have no benefits. Um, and they look outside to recruit. They're not even recruit. They didn't even recruit inside your own state. So you can read how horrible Foxconn is by just taking a look. Oh, you get to line up and then walk into your factory. Don't these people look happy? Eighteen reported suicide attempts. Fourteen confirmed deaths. Yeah, it really sounds like the CEO is... Well, he said he wants to give back to America. Um, yeah, you'll have a large place to eat. I, I can only say that Americans really need to change their psyche and and start uh, taking back their power because this is coming to you. Don't think that this is not coming to you. So I'm going to end with this. New World Order plans exposed by Insider in 1969. I have ended many videos with this. So this guy, Dr. Lawrence Donegan, who attended in 1969 a lecture by Dr. Richard Day, who was a professor of pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical School in New York. And he was previously the medical director of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Well, you can get that Dr. Day was probably into eugenics, but Dunnigan described Dr. Day as being an insider. And Dr. Day started this lecture in 1969 saying, you will have no pens and paper or uh, pencils. You are not to record anything that I say. Now, to those of you who understand that these elite, psychopathic, crazy nutjobs um, who are practicing um, Satanism, that if you understand that they have to inform us because that alleviates them of their guilt. Hey, I'm informing you that the United States is going to radically change. And, well, if you don't do anything, it's your fault. And in some ways, that is absolutely true. So, done again in 1980, recalled that meeting, and it was transcribed, and everything that Dr. Day was talking about in 1969, we are living. We are living all of these changes. All of these changes. But I just want to bring your attention to here. This, this. Well, wait. Um, let me bring your attention to everything is in place and nobody can stop us now. That was back in 1969. This has been going on for a really long time. Dr. Day said, some of you will think I'm talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. People will have to get used to change. Yes, people will have to get used to the idea of change. So used to change that they'll be expecting change. Nothing will be permanent, no roots, no moorings, in contrast to generations of people up until this time where certain things you expected to be and remain in place as reference points for your life. So change was to be brought about, change was to be anticipated and expected and accepted, no questions asked. People are too trusting. People don't ask the right questions. Just like these people in Wisconsin. You're not asking the right questions and you are far too trusting.
And because of that, you are facing your demise. And everything has two purposes. One is the ostensible purpose, which will make it acceptable to people. And second is the real purpose, which would further the goals of establishing the new system. So, does that also mean this guy? Yeah, it really does. Especially when he leaves out the billions that Americans are going to have to fork over for Foxconn. Now, he just talks about that $10 billion investment. It's great, and it's going to be made in America. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter that it is made in America because you are making it for a Taiwanese China company. And even though we still have this idea that we have borders, the new world order is here. Globalism has already been established. And if you do read this transcript, it's very, very long, you will see that, oh, it was purposeful that outsourcing of jobs, the destruction of manufacturing in the United States, and bring it, bring that manufacturing to, well, Japan, and strengthen the economies of those countries while weakening the economy of the United States. All of this is deliberate, and you know that we are being brought down to that third world status. You know that we're entering a time when they want to uh, institute a universal basic income. This country has changed, and people better get that in their psyche. Otherwise, otherwise, they will be destroyed. But here, tearing at the social roots, population shifts were to be brought about so that people would be tending to move into the Sun Belt. They would be the sort of people without roots in their new locations. And traditions are easier to change in a place where there are a lot of transplanted people as compared to trying to change traditions in a place where people grew up and had an extended family and had roots. So, why do you think Foxconn decided to recruit outside of Wisconsin? That's the idea behind this mega region you bring Americans to these regions. How do you do that? You destroy the economies all over in these gray areas. And you provide them with opportunities only in these regions. Here I am in the Piedmont Atlantic region. And there there is an awful lot of factory jobs, corporate um, jobs, right here in Anderson, South Carolina, which is right up here. And people are coming from all over to work here, or they're going to Houston in, in the Texas Triangle mega region. You know, in areas up here in Maine, most of these towns are have been completely decimated. They're impoverished. So when I was living in an area in an apartment building, this guy moved his entire family down from Maine. And I can't, the, the affect on this guy, he was so depressed. He moved his family down because he could not get a job anywhere else. He was working in a factory down here, or is. That's what they do. That's how they deliberately steer the population. And when you bring in new people 
into new areas, well, I can certainly vouch for this. You suddenly feel you don't have any connection to the place. Roots are really important. So tearing at the roots, tearing at the roots, breaking the family. It has all been a brilliant plan. You take away industry and jobs and relocate people, then this is a strategy to break down conservatives, conservatism, uh, when you take away industry and people are unemployed and poor, they will accept whatever change, whatever change they're offered for their survival. And their morals and their commitment to things will all give away to survival. So guess what? You guys in Wisconsin, that's what this guy has offered you. All links are below.